Welcome to the Weber Cup from Las Vegas, the transatlantic 10-pin bowling showdown between the USA and Europe. After five years of European domination, 2018 saw America finally wrestle back control of the coveted trophy. Now in their own backyard, can they hold on to it? With six matches played, they're certainly not feeling the heat yet. The tournament opened with the traditional Baker match, which saw the European challengers draw first blood in front of the first American crowd. Team USA fired back in the first singles match when Anthony Simonson decisively beat Jesper Svensson. Match three saw the U.S. rookie Jacob Butter win the game in his hands in the 10th frame, but left the frame open to give Europe the edge. The Americans fired back through captain Chris Barnes, who led from the front against a misfiring Stu Williams to tie the score at two all. Weber Cup 19 MVP saw off the challenge of Oscu Palerma to take their first lead in the tournament. Match six saw our first rematch between Anthony Simonson and Jesper Svensson with the American winning for the second time to extend Team USA's lead. There was nothing to separate the sides after the first four matches of this year's Weber Cup, but as we can see, wins for Troop and Simonson have turned the tide, giving the leaderboard a distinctly red appearance. Looking to continue that momentum for the US is Jacob Butterf, who faces Stuart Williams in our next game. And that's followed by the Fans' Choice match, where the public decide which player from each team should take part in the final match of the session. But before we join the action, a quick recap on the scoring formats at the Weber Cup. Matches are played over 10 frames, but there are no extra shots in the 10th frame. A strike is worth 30 pins, with the maximum score being the magical 300. A spare is 10 pins plus the pinfall of the first shot in the frame, and actual pinfall after two shots in an open frame. Coming up now, match seven, Butterf versus Williams. Both of these players, Tim, looking to avenge uh, an opening match loss. What kind of adjustments do they need to make, if any? I think they, I think they just got to throw it better when they need it. You know, the, we talked about it earlier. The ninth and tenth frames are the money frames. You know, that's where we, we make or break ourselves. And I think they both made some unfortunate errors in some key spots. We've yet to see a left-hander win a singles match. I know it's early. They've only been three. But is, is there anything, a trend there at all? No, I just think, um, well, first off, Jesper's run into Anthony Simonson. Right. And he's, and he's, <laughs> he's been explains the best, that. <laughs> he's been the best bowler so far uh, on the lane, and uh, he's shown that. So that's obviously been difficult. And Jacob had ball in hand, and he just made a bad shot. He missed, he, he missed and had a bad shot. So... Both of these guys, as you said, are looking to avenge losses, and uh, this is a big match early. I, I got to believe uh, Europe's got to win this match. You you don't want to get momentum going the other way. And I've been in too many of too many of these Weber Cups where momentum swings, and then it's hard to stop that snowball from rolling. They start off things right, and he does. Great shot from Stuart Williams. Great opening shot. Um, he's, as Guy said, he's the catalyst. He's the emotion guy. And he needs to get going. I remember watching an interview with Don Barrett a few years ago, uh, and he said that the key uh, to, to Team Europe getting back in it was not losing a session too badly. He said their bad sessions weren't that bad. I'm th I bet he's telling his team right now, just get one more point. We lose this session 5-3 or 4-4, that's fantastic. Just grab a point and you, try and grind it out. You said it perfectly there, absolutely perfectly. And that's exactly what you... You know, the game plan has got to be for the for the Europeans, and Jacob doesn't help his cause here. It looks like he's taking the same ball, but it's got a little bit more surface. And when I say surface, it's got a little bit more texture on it, and it hooks earlier and doesn't hook as much down lane. As you see, it doesn't make the turn down lane. He leaves a very difficult split. 
Oh, 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 Are you kidding me? That is, I mean, that's a fluke. That is a huge fluke. Have you ever seen that before? Not like that. I can tell you that. Unbelievable. I can't wait to look at this. As he bounces it out off the rack, the three pin comes off, the two pin, three pin comes off the rack and runs over the seven. Watch it come off the rack. Doesn't seem fair. Here it is. Boom. I don't, I don't know what the ruling on that is. We, we're checking with John Weber right now. I, I think it's a spare. I'm pretty confident it's a spare. Stu Williams must be thinking, what do I have to do to get a break? Are you kidding me? Wow. Are you kidding amazing, me? amazing, amazing. Hey, that's the hometown edge, right? <laughs> Jacob saying, you come to my hometown. Yeah. You're going to have to fight against that. Now Stu needs to answer. He need, This is where you need to answer and give a fist pump and let your team know that, hey, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, what a shot. Felt like a good one. It was a perfect shot and just... A terrible break. As good as Jacob Butcher's break was on the spare, and that's what Stu has to be thinking right now, is as bad as this break is for Stewart. That's a perfectly executed shot. And you watch the six pin go flying around the ten pin. We call that the ring ten. Stu Williams, not the first guy to come to Las Vegas and think, how unlucky am I? <laughs> I'm, I'm in that boat too, I can tell you. <laughs> Been there before, Jesse. I mean, I know this is the first time Weber Cup here in Las Vegas, but for bowling, Las Vegas is kind of an iconic place. I mean, this is a great town to bowl this in. This is the hotbed of bowling, and it has been for decades. And uh, I, I, as a proud supporter and part of this Weber Cup in years past, I'm so excited that it's here in, in American soil and here in Las Vegas. And uh, it's just a great, great, great thing. I thought Jacob's got some great stories about growing up in this town as a bowler. I mean, there's some there's some great lanes. I know uh, in the old days, it was the Gold Coast, mm -hmm. the showboat, uh, and now here at the Mandalay Bay. Yeah, I mean, I mean this is, the, you, you said it right, this town has so much history when it comes to our sport in Tenpin. And, uh, you know, Jacob probably doesn't remember some of that history because he's so young. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's got, it, it's a rich, rich, Bowling history here in Las Vegas. Covers the seven pin there. He'll be it, listen after the first two shots. Stewart should be, should have a, a substantial lead after two frames, and he only finds himself in the lead by 13 as Jacob goes over and talks to Captain America, Superman Chris Barnes. And you know what are they going to? Chris says, "Don't worry about it." But I mean. Obviously, getting Jacob into his rhythm is going to be huge for Team USA. Um, are, are the guys just going to give him space? You think? Uh, I think Jacob's a field player. He's just got. To, he's just got to get. He's got to sift through it. Another great shot from Stewart. Yeah, and Stu must think right now. Look, Jacob's wavering a little bit. I need to put the hammer down. This is my point. Yes, Stewart's looked fantastic his first three shots, Jesse. I, I think he just needs to continue to apply the pressure, as you said. Another great shot from Stu. That looks no different than the last shot, except the six pin comes off the wall and takes the 10 pin out. That's just the nature of our beast. It's feast or famine in our sport. Butter trying to get off the mark, and that's it, my little buttercup. Yeah, a little better shot there from Jacob. Uh, you see the ball, the ball drive through the pins this way. Maybe the little pep talk from the captain helped. You heard it earlier, he was nervous. We spoke about it. He's, he was nerves and trying to feel his way through the lane. You asked how, he does, how does he get better? I think he just needs to get more, more, more repetitions on the lane. And the more shots he gets, the more comfortable he gets, the more dangerous that is for the Europeans. Because if Butchev gets going, it's going to be a, a tough train to stop. I mean, it felt like a big ask for Captain Chris Barnes to put his rookie in two matches on the opening session. I must just show the confidence he has. 100%. Another, another great shot from Stewart. There's a little fist pump. There's a little emotion. <laughs> I got this one, boys. But yeah, Barnes puts Butcher in, and I think that's because he knows how important he is to the team chemistry. He, if he gets Butcher comfortable, they know they have a, a, an extra advantage. Great look at Stewart Williams. The big man, rock solid at the foul line. The four pin goes late. There's the fist pump. The Liverpool sensation. I always say that because he loves Liverpool. <laughs> well, this was a good season to love Liverpool. Yes, it was. 
And now Good Jacobs in the, yeah, he's got the rhythm, right? Great answer from Buttruff. Stewart's got to continue the pressure. He's got to continue to apply the pressure. You see the nerves. You see Jacob, he likes to stand. He doesn't like to sit when he's bowling. This is something that he does on tour all the time. He, he's not very comfortable sitting in the chair. So you'll see him move around a lot, walking around a lot. That keeps him loose. And that's what he's trying to do for himself right now. Yeah, maybe just remind the other player that he's there. Stu, who's feeling like this match is going every way he wanted, is not in the clear yet. He's got to keep it up. Got to keep applying the pressure. It's a big shot. You see how much time he's taken? Stort's a big feel guy. You see, he dries the hand, gets the hand ready. He's got one of the softest hands on our tour. And watch how the reaction at the bottom of the swing. There it is. And I mean, psychologically, this is such an important match for Stu Williams. Obviously, Buttress with, you know, he is the top ranked uh, player in this entire Weber Cup in terms of points on the PBA. So he's going to be fine, right? Sure. But a guy like Stu with, with Oscu wavering, with Jesper wavering right on the European side, he's got to be a rock like Dominic. Yeah, he's the, the Europeans need to find, find some momentum and find some energy. And Stort's the right guy to provide that. Oh, great shot from Jacob Buttruff and just leaves the ring seven. And Stuart, I think that has to do with Stuart applying the pressure. He's keeping the pressure on, on Jacob. There's a little shuffle, and but it's the same every time, like we talked about earlier. And there, watch the four pin go right around the seven. Doesn't get oh, it. Oh, good. Good up there, huh? Clips the spare. And I think you'll see a big fist pump, a big show of emotion here if Stuart throws a strike because he knows he gets a little bit bigger of a lead and the ball just barely touches it. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas for Weber Cup 20. It's match seven, and after five frames, Stuart Williams for Europe has the slight edge over America's Jacob Buttroff. Tim Mack picks up the action alongside Jesse May. He knows how important this shot is. You don't want to go down 5-2. Absolutely not. If, if Team Europe can grab this match, then they'll be in it with a chance to come out of this session and it's unheard of. It's a great shot. There's the fist. There's the emotion You're we're right. talking about. You're right. Take that. Little European contingency. Pretty happy about that result. Stewie going over high five in the teammates. Classic look at Stu. Soft hand makes the release. I mean, you talk about grinding one out. Team Europe is hanging around on nothing but guts, really. He knew how important that shot was, and you saw it by the emotion. Oh, Buttrip gets the lucky strike, the light shaker. Not going away. Letting Stort know he's right there. It's 24 pins, the difference between these two players, but really just one frame could switch it. Absolutely. We've seen that already in some of these matches uh, earlier in, in the session. Stewart's got to continue to keep the foot on the gas. He cannot let off the gas. <laughs> Kiss the ball for luck. Stu Williams, star out front. That's a bowler's physique. Perfect shape. Good shot. Splits the 8-9. Unbelievable. What a great shot from Stort Williams. What a great answer. This is a great answer from Stort. He's he labeled is. every single shot for the first seven frames. I'll tell you, as much as he wavered in his opening match, he has been a rock here. Rock solid at the foul line. The one thing that's great for, that, that you can tell when Stewie's bowling great is when he's using his legs. And if he uses his lower body, he creates so much margin for error for himself. And I'll tell you what, this kid is going to be dangerous. He has found his form, Tim. Yeah, Buttrup's not going anywhere. He's, he's, he's really, really bold, a very solid game. Just Stuart is 
keeping the pressure on by just making quality shot after shot after shot. I mean, talk about a time to throw nearly a perfect game. He's had six strikes and one spare so far, Stu Williams. He's been nine. Awesome. And he was unlucky in that second frame. That could have been a strike. his hand you know it's not just about having the ability to step it up it's about doing it when it counts I mean what a shot in the arm for team Europe here not only if he can take the win but the way in which he did it just I mean just mold. pop perfect that's perfect execution you can't beat this you cannot throw it any better than what Stu is throwing it right now is it is it too early to wet our lips for the Stu Williams Simonson matchup? That's a, that's gonna uh, maybe coming tomorrow. I don't know, but Butcher is letting him know that I'm not going anywhere still. <laughs> I'm right here, and you better keep striking. Thanks, you are. Butcher's max is 265, and Stewart's max is 289. So he's letting him know. He's giving him some self. He's he's pumping himself up there with, with with a couple fist pumps. Was this the frame that Stu Williams faltered in his opening match? You are correct. In the ninth frame, he had the big split in that singles match. Can he correct the wrong? Right here. There's that scowl. The game face scowl. Messenger comes. Messenger gets it. There it is. Oh, and he gives him the business. <laughs> Stuart <laughs> Williams, Beef Stew, in the house. <laughs> That's like the worldwide wrestling equivalent of the slam, <laughs> body slam. It gets a little wide of target. There you see, and it makes the comeback. And here comes the messenger. Just the love tap. Which is great, because that was the pin he missed last round, wasn't it? You are correct. And you see the headpin come off the wall and does just enough. The messenger. Love that. And that'll sew it up. Stuart Williams with a big, big, big effort will take this point against Jacob Butcher and narrow that gap to 4-3. What a shot in the arm for Team Europe. Dom Barrett is all smiles. We've got the fan favorite match to come, finish this session. Are we already starting to think about adjustments for tomorrow? Is Dom Barrett going to be making some? I think so. I think the key is, uh, Jesse, the key is going to be what oil pattern is going to be chosen. And then the players have to determine how they're going to, pr to attack that pattern to give themselves the best opportunity to get out in front here. What a game. i got to talk about Stuart Williams, though. What a game he has bowled. An impressive performance when Europe needed it most. Beef Stew steps up to the plate and gets the job done. And that's inconsequential as this match is over. That's what this Weber Cup is about. They were down, they're not out. The big smile shows Team Europe is back. It's been a rocky session, but they're well in it with a chance to come out of here on the level. It's 4-3 right now, Team USA, with a fan favorite match to come. Stu Williams doing what he's done so many times before, which is deliver. What an effort, what an effort by Stu. Amazing performance when Europe needed it most early in this match, early in this session, in this session. He just gets the job done, steps up to the plate when his team needed it. And as you said, they have a chance to level this session. I mean, that's amazing because USA, let's be frank, has looked the better so, uh, squad. They, they, and they've bowled the better scores. And yeah. it just shows you, you got to keep grinding. You got to keep digging. Now, let's see. Who are the chosen ones? I know who I choose. I choose Simonson. I choose oh, oh, no. Stu Williams. We'll see who the fans choose. It's 4-3 Team USA. And one more match left in this session. Weber Cup is heating up. And Jacob Berta, Stu Williams, starting the fire.
Welcome back to the Weber Cup, where Stuart Williams has just claimed a vital point for Team Europe, narrowing the overall score to 4-3. With just one match left to play in this session, can Europe level or will the USA pull ahead? Let's find out as Hannah Wilkes reveals which players the supporters have picked to play in the fans' choice match. Well, you have been voting for some time now for our final match of this opening session. It's a fan's choice. We did this for the first time last year and it worked absolutely brilliantly. And over 5,000 of you have been voting for who you want to see battle it out in this final match. So I now can reveal who the two players will be for match eight of this opening session. For Team USA, by some majority, it's Chris Barnes. <laughs> Come on up there, Chris. And representing Team Europe, it's going to be captain versus captain. Don Barrett, come on up. <laughs> Sporting handshakes already, I like it. Chris, I'll come to you first. Uh, a lot of votes for you to be playing on this fans choice match how confident are you that you can push ahead for your team well i didn't even know all my fans were on the social media so uh, uh we're all surprised kyle wasn't uh, wasn't the winner but uh you know i'm happy to be in the match i've had a good look on this pattern so uh i'll, I'll do my best well dom how about you a vital point up for grabs here you could level this session how are you feeling <laughs> a little bit cold <laughs> i haven't uh, thrown a shot in a little while so yeah. we have three shots practice and you know, Chris is a great bowler as well, and I know he's a bit cold too. So, yeah, hopefully we put a good game on after all of that as well. So it's captain versus captain in the final match of the opening session, with the US holding a narrow advantage in the overall score. Can they finish the day on a high, or can Europe fight back and level the match at four all? It's time to find out with our commentary team of Tim Mack and Jesse May. They can both talk the talk but which will walk the walk to Mac uh, both these captains want to lead from the front they've been successful in their opening matches who do you think has the edge right now uh, that's a great question um, I gotta think Dom Barrett's gonna play a little deeper into the middle of the lane and if he can get comfortable he's a little younger so he doesn't he doesn't take as many shots to warm up as Chris is uh, the elder statesman of the group, as he said, but they both have been off for quite some time. I think the guy that gets out to the early lead is going to win this match. Can, can you explain that a little more? Play a little deeper into the lane. What's that going to be? When I say deeper in the lane, I say Dom's going to be further left. So his ball's going to be tracking further left in, in the middle of the lane. Probably he'll be crossing between the fourth and fifth arrow, I would think, a little deeper into the lane. So when I say deeper, I'm talking about he's, tra he's starting to move his feet and move his target to the left. I mean, one thing we've seen so far, obviously, Dom is like the king of adjustments, right? Did he change his ball and make a bunch of adjustments in his first match and still win? Absolutely. And, and the one thing we see now is Chris is changing balls as well. He's going with a different ball that he hasn't used yet because, as you can see, he's also migrated himself left of, in the middle of the lane. They saw what Stort Williams did, and they're going to try to mirror that same shot shape. Chris Barnes wants to show the rest. Oh, my gosh. What happened there? Did it, it didn't even hook. No, it was wide right. Uh, Chris uh, needs to get his hand around the ball a little bit more and make it come off the back of the pattern a little bit more with his hand. And that's just a little flat at the bottom. And the ball never picks up and it goes right by it. And it gets a little too far right down lane. And the players have said earlier, Jesse, that if they miss right down lane, unless they have some severe angle off the off the back of the pattern, that the ball just is not going to hit the head pin. And we, we saw we've that. actually seen that a couple times. Yes, tonight, we? yes. Which looks doable. Yeah, it makes a spare. That's a, that's a good opening frame, good, good spare. But as we've seen yeah, from the, this, this scoring, uh, missing a few pins on that opening shot, that really hurts you later on, because obviously uh, the, the way the scoring is, it's that first shot that counts. Yeah, the count is big. Seven, count. Seven, seven's not a good count. You know, you want to have nine, obviously you want to strike. But if you don't strike, you want to leave nine. So we'll see if Dominic's further left than Chris is. Same type of shot where he's a little further left and misses right down lane and the ball comes in behind the back of the head pin. I mean, that ball did have a little bit more movement than Chris's, but I guess not enough. Yeah, it's Dominic's rev rate is, gonna, is, is higher than Chris's and you'll see his ball comes back where Chris's ball didn't come back from. So these guys are going to have to make the adjustments. It's a tough spare for Dom. It, it's the double wood. He's got to make 
have the ball just be to the right of the three pin and drive and take out the eight pin. Well, Wood. We got that one. That's a real knee knocker, isn't it? I mean, I think at this point in time, and anytime you leave pins on the deck, they're all knee knockers, in my opinion. <laughs> this format, this environment, what's at stake in this great city? I'll tell you what, there's no better place to be than at the Weber Cup. So what's Chris thinking right now? What's the adjustment ball from change. frame one? Oh, Makes wow. the ball change to the same ball used in the other map. There it is. <laughs> it's the it's, is that the messenger? Well, that's a different messenger. The pin comes off the wall and takes out the nine. He go, you see he locks down his angles. When I say locks him down, he closes his angles, uses a ball that is a little smoother, and you see the pin come off the wall and just tickle the nine pin. Ah, so he played for done. more action rather than more power? Or He, he played for a different angle. Right. He, he knows that if he has to go into a hooking contest with Dominic, it's not to his strength. So he went to his strength, which is a little bit more up the lane, and it worked well. For him. Good shot from Dom, leaves the four pin. Makes the adjustment from the first shot and comes up a little high, and this shouldn't be any problem on the spare. Very fitting that we have a tactical match for our last one. And the stakes are high here for Dominic Barrett, of course, can level the scores for his team, which would be huge considering what's happened. And Chris Barnes wants to seal this. Chris Barnes wants to seal this session. It's been great for USA so far. He needs that 5-3 score to prove it. You mentioned the tactical uh, battle between these two. These two have some of the highest bowling IQ in our sport. They're both have, I say, a tool, big toolbox. That means they have a lot of tools to choose from when making their decisions on the lanes, mentally and physically. These are two of the best to do it in our sport. He liked the last shot. Going to repeat. Is that the same kind of thing? Another great shot. He, he's changed his angle from the first shot. You see, he, he's committed to making his changes, and he knows what he, could, what he can and cannot do. Cuts the angle down. He's about 17 at the arrows. He's board 17 to about board 5 at the break point. And boom, perfect shot, perfect execution. I mean, the way these guys make adjustments, you feel like they could both bowl on ice if they needed to. They could bowl in the parking lot, and it'd still be a good match. <laughs> Oof. A little high on the head pin. That ball's reading it a little. Now, Dom's in a quandary right now. He's got to make a decision because Chris, he knows, has a double already early, and he's down and early in the match. He might have to make a big change here to make a big ball decision, ball change. And he's got to be aggressive and, t and take a chance because Chris doesn't look like he's, he's found his groove after that first frame. He's found his groove, and he doesn't want to let him Get off the ropes. Only strikes will do right now if you're Dominic Barrett. Needs to find that. The ball, the angle, the pattern. Barnes says, I'm in the groove. Yeah, Chris is using a ball that's very smooth off the back of the pattern. So he's using his physical gifts that he's honed over years to make the changes to get the ball to do what he wants it to do. We call him Superman. Delivers again. <laughs> he is a finisher. You can understand why he has been a legend of this game for so long. And still at the top of the game. Uh, yeah, what, he's 20, one of the best. 30 years in, right? Yeah, he's one of the best of all time. Uh, clearly in my generation. And obviously loves that shot. Um, he's, just, he's just got so many gifts. And obviously he's just getting the job done right now. He's putting heat on Dom. Similar to the last shot, I think. Yeah, very close. Just that one left leaves the 4-7-10. I think it's a ball change for Dom as well right now. He's going to have to move deep, a little bit deeper into the lane. And why hasn't he changed? I mean, from what we've seen, he's not a guy who's scared of making a change mid-frame. Yeah, I thought he was going to change this frame just because I think he could see that Barnes has a pretty good shot to the pocket. And uh, I was surprised that, that, he did, that he didn't try to change there. This is getting out of hand early. This is one of the This is actually with the first match that one one gentleman one player has a big lead over the other other player. 
Yeah, I mean, he could close this out, you know, by the eighth or ninth, right? Yeah, a couple, couple more strikes here from Chris to really get out in front. And uh, he'll be hard to catch. And Barnes, you mentioned his long, uh, long activity in this game. Now, he came back from a big injury last year, yeah, he didn't had, he? I mean, I think he was out for three years. Yeah, he had re back surgery. Uh, you know, he had back surgery. Uh, another great shot from Chris, which still leaves a glimmer of hope in, uh, in the European corner. Uh, but Chris had uh, the same surgery that Tiger Woods had with uh, his disc. He had his disc shaved off, uh, and it was causing him severe discomfort. And this year, Chris has performed really well out on our tour. And as I said, he, he's, he's the elder statesman of this group, and uh, he's just showing his grit and determination to come back and get, get back to the top of this game and get put back to the top of the level that he's at today. You cannot think of a better person to be captaining Team USA at this moment. Chris Barnes leading from the front. Tactical encouragement from the back. Dominic Barrett trying to find an answer. Here's the ball change. I don't know why. I'm shocked, Jesse. I thought for sure he would switch in the fourth frame, and he didn't. But I can tell you this. He's only down 34 pins. A couple of non-strikes from Chris. Dom is in a must-strike situation. You see that ball just be, it's smoother off the transition. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the 20th Weber Cup, where the USA currently lead Europe 4-3 in the race to 18. This is match eight, the fan's choice match, and it's captain versus captain. Chris Barnes of the US is at the lane with commentary from Jesse May and Tim Mack. Uh-oh, that's why I crashed the pace. Oh, very lucky. Has he let the foot off the pedal? He was very fortunate there, Jesse, to, to, to leave only the 2-8, the 10-pin fell late that could have been the 2A10 he missed a little right little right of target watch the ball listen little right right there down lane Oof. and then it just doesn't get back up I like to say get back up the hill in bowling terminology and he leaves the 2 8 is it the double wood the, the double wood there it is <laughs> I'm getting it you got it you got it my man <laughs> well we haven't seen anyone miss this yet I know you said it's a tough spare, tough spare. but these guys have been good for it uh, I mean, you're talking about 80 of the best, so you're not going to see a lot of mistakes out there. But pressure does a fun, funny things to people. Mm -hmm. If Europe's to have any chance to get back in this game, this is a must-strike situation for Dominic Barrett. Well, he's got the ball to do it. It worked last time. Is the ball change one frame too late, or can he get the job done? There it is. Oh, man, that's awesome. There's the double. Now that keeps Chris honest, okay? Now Chris is going to have to throw a couple strikes coming, coming down here to make sure that Dom doesn't... You don't want to give these guys a glimmer of hope. They see a little light at the end of the tunnel, and they want to walk through it and have the spotlight shine on them. So... Be a huge statement here for Chris Barnes if he can strike it. 100%. He knows it. This is what captains do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was the same problem he had last frame. Yeah, that looked very similar to Dominic Barrett's fourth frame, where he 4 7 10. Again, the 10 pin falls late. You'll watch this ball as it dives in on the head pin. Great look at it from our camera crew. Drives through the head pin and watch the 10 pin fall late. Just Ooh. there, just to the last minute to leave the, the 4 7. So this one's very makeable, I would imagine. Now, Dominic Barrett can strike to close this match to within 10 pins. Whoa. Who would have thought that a few frames ago? Have a talk with the, the young kid. Simonson giving him some another eye, another set, another set of eyes down there just to give him re reaffirmation or maybe what he's seeing to try to give Chris some information to help. Now Dominic Barrett. Got to have it. She's got to have it. She's got it. There it is. 
The question is, Jesse, is he, that one frame too late? Did he switch one frame too late? We're going to find out. I mean, he's some kind of competitor, Don McBarry. What kind of constitution this man has? But Three strikes in a row with the new ball. Perfect. You can't, you, you can't bowl scared out here. You have to bowl and be committed. You can't be afraid to make changes. So what does Barnes have to do that he didn't do the last two frames? I think he's going to move a little deeper into the lane with this ball. He's going to move a little up. He doesn't like the feel. He's going to reset, retool, start your routine again. You want to get good rhythm and good tempo here. He knows how big the shot is. He knows Dom ha now has got his attention. Right, if he doesn't strike here, Dom can take the lead no matter what, can he? Here comes the focus. And a wry smile. Oh, my goodness. Four, six, seven. Doesn't sound good. No, it's a big split. And the, the chances of making this are not very high. A little left to target. Drives right there. Actually, I like. I thought the shot was pretty good. He's surprised it hooked as much as it did, as I am. I think he's got to get the two pins of wood here. Get, and try to bounce the pins out and try to pick off that six pin. Nope. And who would have thought it? All of a sudden, Team Europe poised to be in the, the pole position. This is what it's all about right here. Can Dom Barrett step up to the plate, make the shot, and take an 11-pin lead with a strike? He knows how big this shot is. So a strike here, he goes, as you say, ball in hand. Correct. He's been a pressure player his entire Weber Cup career. High on the head pin. That, that ball didn't look like he threw it very fast either. No, it was, it was a little soft and a little left to target. With a spare here, we have a one-pin match. <laughs> All the marbles. I think I think Chris is feeling pretty fortunate there that Dom didn't strike on that ball. Makes a spare, so it's 170 to 171. We got a ball game. Ninth and tenth frame. Here we go. Chris Barnes knows, I guess, that he can strike out and win. Ball in hand. He knows if he strikes in this ball, the destiny is in his. It is in, is in his hand. But as you said, these last four frames, it, you know, he's, he's had his struggles. He's going to have to make another move left yeah. into the middle of the lane and trust himself to get that ball to the right. And four frames without a strike. What's up for this one? Oh, boy, he leaves the 2-7. Another tough spare. He <laughs> I made mean, the there's move. a lot of tough ones here today. Yeah. He made the move deeper into the lane. And the ball just doesn't get back up, doesn't make the corner right there. It, it looks like it's going to make the corner, and then it just kind of goes forward down lane. Are the, are the lane conditions a little funny now so late in the session? That's Is that right. what's happening? Yes, there's a lot of transition. There's been a lot of traffic, and there's a lot of oil down lane now. So the ball's playing tricks on these guys. They're very tricky out there, and you have to be precision is key right now. Tough spare to make. Hey, he just has to make it. He just has to make it. Oh, no. <laughs> Dominic Barrett in the driver's seat. Two open frames in a row for the captain, Chris Barnes. He's hanging his head. Dominic Barrett strikes here. And he takes a commanding lead in this match. This is a giant shot. And I mean, Team Europe is going to be feeling so good at the end of this session if they can get it to level. Regardless, as long as Dominic Barrett doesn't open in this frame, he will have the lead going into the 10th frame. Any spare, actually, any spare, any mark, he will have the lead. Strike would be huge. Likes it. Arms out. <laughs> Just the heat on. when he needed it most, he got it best. That was hands. Huge High shot. fives all around, wasn't it? That was strong, too, right? Huge shot. Huge. That was strong. That's why he's been at the top of this European game for so long. And for Barnes, he just has to ask the question, I guess, or is it? Has to strike. Yeah. Shoots 210 with a strike. 
barring any unforeseen crazy stuff from Dom, this is going to be a 4-4 Weber Cup after session one. Must strike. There it is. Keeps him honest. Good enough, but basically anything but an open frame here, and we're 4-4. Still, need, still, needs still needs a mark. Yeah. Still needs a mark. That shot right there, that's how big this shot was. You see him get around, his hand gets around the ball a little bit more, creates a little bit more rotation and axis tilt to get that ball to come off the spot more. And it and it makes it up the hill, as we say in bowling, and does gets the job done. It's a good pressure adjustment. Just enough pressure for Dominic Barrett where he's gonna have to take the deep breath. Huge shot. There's no gimme. That's it. We saw a couple a of players falter there, look, but not look the, the captain. Look at that baby. And they're out high-fiving. And that is a rejuvenated Team Europe, Tim Mack. How just like that, how the tide turns. You look at the game. Barnes gets out to the early lead halfway through the game. We're thinking this is over. And it flips. The script flips, and Dominic Barrett finishes the job. Both captains are alongside me. And first of all, Chris, I'll come to you. Hands on hips kind of says it all. That match just slipped away from you, didn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty irritated. We had a, had a pretty big lead there. Dom saw the hook in the front early in the game, and I saw it all in the, la in the back half of the game. And, uh, you know, I, I, we certainly had an opportunity, and, uh, uh, you know, I didn't do a very good job there. They were talking in commentary about the conditions on the lane and how they've changed and how difficult it is last out there. Did you find that to be the case, that there was oil further down the lane than perhaps you were expecting? It, it just changes fast. And, uh, you know, we're getting an idea of what's going on out there too, but uh, uh, we both got full for a little bit. He made the right moves and, uh, and I was slow. And Dom, for you, two single match wins in this opening session of the Weber Cup and two where a little bit of luck went your way, didn't it? Yeah, you know, Chris really put it on me early. I even went for, you know, to spare <laughs> like that 10 pin because the right-hand side of this lane bounces out and I can't spare the 4 7 10 ever. So I went for that, didn't even get one. So it was a pretty poor start for me. Like I said, I saw the, the lane being quite tricky early and uh, I managed to make some moves off of that. And Chris was a bit unfortunate and he saw it a bit later in the game and that was really the difference. This has been the closest opening session we've seen in some time in the Weber Cup. Just how key was that point? Really key. You know, we've got a, a long time now until we bowl again tomorrow. So. Um, here in Vegas, you know, it's what, three o'clock in the afternoon, so we can go and get some dinner and sit down and really think about what happened today and then we'll come back tomorrow fresh. Confirmation of the results from day one and it was Europe who seized the early initiative with victory in the team match. Anthony Simonson struck back for the US in the singles. Dominic Barrett then edged a nervy encounter against Jacob Butter before three straight wins from America saw them open up a two-point lead. Stuart Williams pegged the scores back to 4-3 before the European captain tied the match in the final game of the session. Day two features a selection of singles and doubles, concluding with the popular Team Baker match. But we start the play with the flamboyant Kyle Troop taking on Oscar Palermo before the Finnish veteran returns to partner his captain Dominic Barrett against Jacob Butter and Chris Barnes. Join us next time as the Weber Cup enters day two here at the Mandalay Bay.